So good morning, everyone. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about cell and TM. So yeah, from today, yeah, we are going to use new yeah, new template for presentation. I think it is quite nice, so you guys can use it. So this is some um, fifth from the tenth of our schedule of material part. So today I'm talking about some TM for nanoparticle cell and tissues. So mostly focus on nanoparticle and cells. And then uh, from next week, uh, best will teach you how to do this kind of other IR, XRD, other things. So, and then she told me that the class will start from 8 a.m., not 7 a.m. So from next week, 8 a.m., you can take the class. So what is TM? TM, as you knew, uh, transmission electron microscopy, which means transparent sample yeah, compared to SEM. So the big difference between TEM, transmission electron microscopy, and the SEM, scanning electron microscopy, is the transmission. So which means that the light should be, should penetrate your sample. So when you look at the TEM images, you can see many white area, which means that there is nothing. So when you prepare the sample, you should remember the sample should be transparent. Transparent meaning it means the light can penetrate, okay? And then how was the size of the TM machine like this? The bigger is better? Yes, actually bigger is better. So how you know the uh, resolution of the TM machine? This is kilovolt voltage, 200 kilovoltage. And then when you look at this huge amount of TM, 1.25 millivolt called high resolution TM. So depending on the size and depending on the power, you can know their resolution. Okay? And then how they organize? They are very complicated. So I didn't go deeper about these things. Anyhow, uh, this is your screen. You can see the images with the operator. And then this is some sample you hear and the many condenser lens and object up aperture and then first intermediate lens, second intermediate lens and project lens. So you just remember they have many lens and many condenser lens and then your sample part and your screen parts they are far away. So as you can expect when you incorporate more lens the machine can be more bigger. So that is why big machine have uh, better, big machine has better resolution. So simply, what I look at looking at by TEM images, so you can look at the nanoparticle size and shape. So for example, you, we can say the nanoparticle size around 20 nanometer, and the shape is um, not spherical, but not rectangular, just <coughs> how can I say irregular morphology, and then the so size distribution also. If you measure one by one by your hand, you can know the size. You can make some size, size distribution curve. And then when you look at the cell intracellular organelles, also you can see. So as you can see here, this white, white blood, which means that they, the light, the electron can penetrate your sample. So because of this, they have some this kind of white area. And then when you study the cell in the textbook, you can see many images like this. So all kinds of these images from TM image. We can call bio-TM. Yeah. Actually, uh, there was not much of difference between bio-TM and just normal TM. But bio-TM, uh, many bio-TM facility was set up in hospital because for pathology lab, they needed this kind of bio-TM for confirming their diagnosis. Yeah. So many hospitals, they have this bio-TM. So anyhow, when you use this bio-TM to look at the cell, you can see cell interesting organelles very in detail. So let's focus on the nanoparticle. 
So you can see the nanoparticle size, shape, and sometimes if your TM has EDS, you can know the composition like SEM EDS. And then when they have set pattern, you can also see crystallinity like XRD. So this EDS and set pattern is option for TM. So when you look, when you choose which TM facility are you going to use, and then you can see detail about this EDN, EDS option, and set pattern option. First, yeah, I made this bioblock nanoparticle, yeah, A and B. So you can see the size around 150 nanometer, and then this kind of a uh, white area, which means they have major porosity. So we can say our nanoparticle has a major porosity and size around 100, 150 nanometer. And then at the same time, I made uh, this is maybe just MSN with aminated one. After amination, also I can see the major porous inside of the this nanoparticle. So I can say after amination, the nanoparticle size similar and the major porosity looks similar. But for checking the major porosity, I have to uh, measure the BT in detail. And then this is from the other paper. So when you gather some exosomes from early stage of osteogenesis and the late stage of osteogenesis, uh, exosome composition is different. So how did you know? So when you detect this is TM, and then you magnify this one, and then this is some set pattern. So in this set, this set pattern, there is no clear link like this. They have this link and this link, but in this here, there's no link which means then no crystallinity. So when you look at the set pattern, the only reason to look at the link. So like this, sometimes you can see very clear link. This is some from diffraction of the electron, so which is exactly the same as XRT. So I will show you later. So anyhow, depending on the which stage did you collect the exosome, early, no link, which means no crystallinity, a late, stage exosome, they can have a link, which means that they have some crystallinity something. So you wanna you wanna know which kind of composition are there for having this crystallinity. And then you can see the EDS together. The EDS you can see calcium and phosphate and carbon and oxygen from the original composition of your exosome. And the P and C A is a special thing. So you can see late exosome, they have calcium and phosphate a lot. So we can say this kind of link from calcium phosphate crystallinity, like hydrochapatite or other things. So when you look at some composition ratio between calcium and phosphate, you can assume this is some uh, calcium hydro I mean, hydroxide or just calcium phosphate or any kind of other form. Okay. And then this is some from the cell. They culture the cell for osteogenesis for until 15, uh, 14 days. And then you can see, uh, they look at some kind of special organelle here. And then, noting, noting a little bit, you can see very clear link here, right? So from certain point, you can see this clear link. And then this clear link is detected from this kind of collagenous structure. So we can say that this osteo human MSC, they can differenti differentiate into the bone, and then from the differentiation, they can make some collagen one extracellular matrix, and then in there, they can deposit some calcium phosphate here. Okay, so there is why you can see this kind of clear link here. And then, and th so, so this is from the exosome and nanoparticle, and this is from some cells, okay? And then when you look at this nanoparticle, also you can magnify here and then you can see the set pattern. So 111, 220, and 311. Yeah. So when you look, when you uh, analyze this sample in XRD, also you can know exactly the same as this plane are detected. So this is an exact example. So they first uh, uh, made this kind of, uh, what is that? Some MOS, they made it in different shape. And then they check XRD by powder. 
So this uh, black one is their measurement, and then red one is their uh, reference. So you can see the black one is exactly match the reference of red peak, right? So you can see 002, 101, 103, 110. And then they want to know the, and then the, this, the unmarried of this XRD, you need huge amount of powder. But if you just gather small amount, the TM is the best option. So you want to analyze the, this kind of two different morphology of this MOS2, and then high resolution TM, you can also know their uh, lattice space, so which is called point, point 0.03 nanometer. And then from these images, also you can gather some set pattern. So this link has their unique plane name, like 002, 100, 103. So you can see all these uh, highly expressed peak perfectly match this set pattern. So there is no argument, there is no, there is exactly matching each other, XRD and set pattern. And some people want to ask me, how do you know this is, this is 002, not 100? So you can download from, download free software from website, and then the software can analyze. Yeah. So for more detail, yeah, you can gather some information from the YouTube or Google, so they will let you know. So and, and then sometimes actually if you know the, their composition or crystallity first, and then you can refer to other literature how they are organized. Yeah. So any other two options. One is you can, uh, there's a special software to detect this is a which kind of plane they are assigned. The other one is you can know the reference paper and then match your reference paper result and your current result. So let's say XRD pattern of MOS2 correspond to database of MOS2. The peak of XRD pattern around this is good crystallite purity of MOS2 consists of this one. And the microstructure MOS2 was visualized by TM and the high resolution and set pattern. The low verification show in figure S2 respectively by observing high resolution. The obvious interplanar spacing of MOS2 was measured about 0.3 nanometer, corresponding to the two crystalline plane of the MOS2. Actually, if you study the XRD, also you can know the uh, uh, space interplanar spacing from the XRD, so you can match them. And then, set pattern of MOS2 demonstrate the five diffraction link that can be indexed to index the something like. So from these images, you can know the XRD and set pattern is similar things, but the measurement way is different. But you can, when you want to know the crystallity from your sample by TM, you can choose the set pattern. So, how you prepare the sample for normal way? So let's say this is an image plane from your screen, and your this is your sample, and then the beam is exposed here, electron and the object land and back focal plane. So from this back focal plane, you can gather the diffraction pattern, and then this one you can images. So same as the SEM. When you go right, the image go left. Mm. So the transparent sample is good uh, beyond, around this area of the voltage. And the thickness uh, like this. For high, high resolution TEM, yeah, around here is best. And then manipulable, and then also conductive is better than non-conductive material. Same as SEM. Yeah, but uh, sometimes just non-conductive material can be visualized by TM, but after doping some special metal things for counter stain. And the representative of the bulk material, structure, microstructure, defect, chemical composition. 
So when you look at the TM, they specifically focus a very small part. So for example, if you just product a sample, and then sometimes it's not easy to see what you want. So you have to know exactly what you are looking for before going to the TM facilities. And then how you make some TM sample. So this is some grid for TM. Maybe in iTrain we have this kind of grid. So grid material, this composition of grid can compose of copper, nickel, ammo, or AU. So maybe in iTrain we have copper. So if we want to quantify copper in copper grid by TM and EDS, what will happen? They should show severe interference, right? So if we want to detect the composition of CU in EDS by TM, and then you have to use another grid. Okay, that's what I want to say. So sometimes when you look at the literature, they said they are using CU grid and they, they analyze CU composition. Yeah, sometimes they write, write, write down like that. And then this kind of, uh, so how you prepare this sample on CU grid? Actually, this, this is a CU grid, very small, and then you need this special TM forcep. So you should be very careful about this forcep because they can be easily uh, shaped or broken down, especially this, the, the tip, edge of this forcep. So you should carefully deal with this kind of forcep. And then using this special forcep, you can clip the CU grid. And then let's say you have nanoparticle. You dissolve your nanoparticle in ethanol or DW in whatever you want. And then sonicate them for even suspension. And then you have to make it very lower, lower concentration. So one milligram per ml, sometimes they induce very severe aggregation. So 0.1 milligram per ml, something like, or even less than. And then you, you collect 10 microliter and then put it there. And then after, if you use ethanol, within five minutes or 10 minutes, they evaporate. And it's done. And then this grid have this kind of 100 space. So when you look, sometimes when you look at the TM images, they have this kind of edges. So, so which means that you have 100 times to look at the TM images from this grid. Okay, so one sample, one grid. So this grid, 30 set, maybe around uh, $200, so very expensive, this grid. So you should be uh, carefully dealing with this kind of CU grid, okay? So you can contact SNU or SKU TM center. So you can use Professor Kim's ID. Maybe you can ask the other colleagues. And then how you write down the TM? So very simple. Uh, blah, 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 exam by high resolution TM or just TM. And you should mention the operating voltage. 300 kilovolt, in my case. Also, this is also a similar way. I'll write down in another manner. <coughs> okay. So when you use some SAD or EDS pattern, you just mention EDS, which machine, and SAD pattern from which condition. Oh, you should write down. And the second step, you can see the cell organness from the, these TM images. So let's look at details about the cell organelles. From starting,
Cells are the smallest living units of an organism. All cells have three things in common, no matter what type of cell they are. All cells have a cell membrane, which separates the inside of the cell from its environment, cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like fluid, and DNA, which is the cell's genetic material. There are two broad categories of cells. The first category is eukaryotic cells. They have organelles, which include the nucleus and other special parts. Eukaryotic cells are more advanced, complex cells, such as those found in plants and animals. The second category is prokaryotic cells. They don't have a nucleus or membrane-enclosed organelles. They do have genetic material, but it's not contained within a nucleus. Prokaryotic cells are always one-celled or unicellular organisms, such as bacteria. So what are organelles? Organelle means little organ. Organelles are the specialized parts of a cell that have unique jobs to perform. Let's start with the nucleus, the control center of the cell. The nucleus contains DNA, or genetic material. DNA dictates what the cell is going to do and how it's going to do it. Chromatin is the tangled, spread out form of DNA found inside the nuclear membrane. When a cell is ready to divide, DNA condenses into structures known as chromosomes. The nucleus also contains a nucleolus, which is a structure where ribosomes are made. After ribosomes leave the nucleus, they will have the important job of synthesizing or making proteins. Outside the nucleus, the ribosomes and the rest of the organelles float around in cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance. Ribosomes may wander freely within the cytoplasm or attach to the endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes abbreviated as ER. There are two types of ER. Rough ER has ribosomes attached to it, and smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes attached to it. The endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane-enclosed passageway for transporting materials such as the proteins synthesized by ribosomes. Proteins and other materials emerge from the endoplasmic reticulum in small vesicles, where the Golgi apparatus, sometimes called the Golgi body, receives them. As proteins move through the Golgi body, they're customized into forms that the cell can use. The Golgi body does this by folding the proteins into usable shapes or adding other materials onto them, such as lipids or carbohydrates. Vacuoles are sac-like structures that store different materials. Here, in this plant cell, the central vacuole stores water. Going back to... Okay, so... On so like this, you can know the journey of the organelles. So the reason why I show you this video is that to the animal cell, maybe this is a very basic an cell biology, but I want to increase your memory about this. So let's see one more time about this organelles. So like you mentioned, nucleus. What is the law? You should try to remember, they make ribosome, right? And then this is nu uh, the nucleus, they have euchromatin or heterochromatin, and then they contain some uh, DNA here. And then what is the law of the ER? Yeah, they have ER, and then we have free ribosome or attaching ribosome in the rough ER. So when the ER has, doesn't have any ribosome, just say smooth ER, SCR, 
and then when they have this liposome, LOF ER. So LOF ER, we can say. And then this liposome, uh, the protein I made in this liposome, so especially the cell want to use the protein inside of their cell, they are using free liposome. But when, when they deliver the protein to outside, they are using this uh, LOF ER, a liposome in the ER. And then mitochondria, mitochondria is RS controller, and then they make some energy, okay? The cytoplasm, and then Golgi apparatus, why is the low? Uh, they attaching some carbohydrate or lipid to 3D structure of the protein. So they finalize the protein here. So when you think about the journey of the mRNA to the protein, so mRNA can be uh, translated by not uh, transcripted in the nucleus, right? So when the mRNA transcripted by nucleus, and then from this nuclear pore, they can go out, and then they approach the ribosome, free ribosome or love, uh, ribosome in ER, which means RER, love ER, and then they make first type of the protein, and it's not enough. So they can go Golgi apparatus, and then they finalize their protein, and then using some vesicle, protein can go out, or this protein can be utilized inside of their cytoplasm. Hmm. But sometimes, when they when this lysosome, they are used for ending the protein inside of your body. This kind of garbage. Yeah. So this is their structure of your cell. And then you can see very detail about the role of the this lysosome. And you look at this. Uh, break down the macromolecule and digest them and go to apparatus collect package or make the protein. And the you know membrane the outer layer, unmost layer of the cell. Yeah, bilipid layer. This lipid and then this hyd hydrophilic, hydrophobic layer here. The procedure also another things they can enzyme and they carry out reaction to remove some harmful molecules like bacteria or other things. The liposome, yeah. Protein synthesis side. The pore, they can deliver an inner the protein, whatever you want. Nuclear envelope, the outer most outer layer of the nucleus, and nucleus side where liposomes are produced. And nucleus, command center of cell, consists of DNA. And then smooth ER doesn't have any liposome. Rough ER, <coughs> they have liposome. And yeah, both of them, they can make protein synthesis. And cytoskeleton, the outer, the, the structure of your cell, microtubule, intermediate filament, and actin, they have a special law. Actin filament, cell movement, and their cell shape. Intermediate filament, uh, they, they transfer the protein to the certain site and they support the overall strength of the cell. And the microtuber, also, especially the, when the cell is divided, they are using microtuber. And uh, there is a centrior some cell. Centrior cell, they are detected in the, in the center of the cell. So sometimes you can stain the centrio. You can know the, where is the center side of the cell. Cytoplasm, just a jelly-like structure. The mitochondria, energy factory. Yeah. So we, you can, uh, after these images, uh, I will show you one by one this uh, inside of organelles by TM images. So this is a, your detection cell. So how you look at this cell? OK. What did you see from these TM images? Maybe this is nucleus, right? And then this is maybe nucleoside, which make liposome, right? And then they have this kind of things. So according to their side, this is some looks ER. 
actually this kind of uh, wave things can be detected from the ER or Golgi apparatus. But depending on the uh, their size and the, when you see high magnify images, you can, you can distinguish. And then this is black one, maybe lysosome. Or white one, maybe lippy, or I'm not sure. And then when you look at this kind of line, like this, this is mitochondria. The, uh, when you look at the, some two layer of certain organelles, we, which have only two things. One is nucleus. I will show you later. This nucleus membrane have two layer, and also mitochondria layer or two layer. So when you look at the two layer, one is mitochondria and the other one is nucleus. How you distinguish inside? Okay. And then maybe over here they have some this kind of wave shape is also Golgi apparatus. Uh, okay, let's look at detail. So this is nucleus and nucleoside, as I mentioned. And then this area, rough here. So you can see this little dot dot here. Maybe this is from low magnification, you cannot see detail, but in your mind, dot dot dot, dot there. And that is area when does, and they doesn't have this kind of ribosome, and that which is called smooth here, SCR, right? And then this is a Golgi apparatus here. And then mention mitochondria like this, mitochondria, or mitochondria. And then this is some um, uh, euchromatin. Euchromatin means less condensed DNA. Heterochromatin, more condensed. So they, their color is black. Okay? So this is, this, this is more black color, right? Compared to this. This is more white, this is more black. So this is heterochromatin area, heterochromatin area, and this is some euchromatin area. So if we want to quantify composition of the euchromatin and heterochromatin by TM images, and then you can use a grayscale to quantify the heterochromatin and euchromatin area. That's the normal way how to do. And then uh, this is some nucleus membrane. Maybe I sh told you two layer, inner membrane and outer membrane, okay? And then they said it's a vesicle, or some vesicle is there. And then sometimes vesicle and lysosome is not easy to distinguish. So in that case, you have to look at detail. So when you want to know better about this team images, I refer to this website, so you can visit there. They have many good images and many good dictionary how you distinguish single organelles from others. Okay, this is another example. It is, so first thing, you have to look at the TM images. You have to see the nucleus first. Okay, nucleus, and then the, uh, you can see this is heterochromatin or uh, nucleoside. We don't know yet, but according to the color, you can see heterochromatin and euchromatin here. And then when you look at this uh, nucleus membrane in detail, you can see two layers, okay? So there is what inner nucleus membrane, outer nucleus membrane. And sometimes they have some pore. This is called nucleus pore, around 20 or 30 nanometer maximum. So inner nucleus membrane, outer nucleus membrane, okay? So in this low magnification, you cannot see nuclear pore, but high magnification, you can see it. And then, this is a rough ER. So this is a little, little dot, so high magnify. ER, you can see dot, 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 dot. This is some ribosome. So we can say this is rough ER. And why is that? This is the mitochondria. They have this kind of things. And then you can see two layer. They have it, mitochondria. And then uh, when you look at this one, they have some free ribosome. Like this is free ribosome. They doesn't have this kind of dot dot here. Okay. Yeah. This is another example of a smooth ear. Ah, sorry. This is some free ribosome. 
free, free liposome is not attaching to the ear, so cytoplasm, just the liposome are there. Da, 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 da. It's a liposome. So when you see many liposome inside of your cell, you can mention uh, our cell can make can to make more protein for by themselves. Smooth ear doesn't have any dot 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 here. Okay. So actually, it's not easy to distinguish RER, SER, uh, free liposome in low magnification images, but in high magnification images, you can easily detect. Okay. This is another one. It's so very complicated, but anyhow, when you want to see this kind of cell, you have to see first nucleus. Find the nucleus first. And then find the cell membrane where. And then you will know the whole picture. Okay? Nucleus and cell membrane. And here I want to say uh, this uh, gorge apparatus. So this kind of gorge apparatus, they show like this kind of round shape and many layers. And then, actually, you can see mitochondria inside the gorge apparatus? No, because this cell, they have some depths. So some part, they have mitochondria, but inner part, they have gorge apparatus. Okay? You can see many mitochondria here, and then gorge apparatus here, and here, and here. So mitochondria, like you say, two layer and then this kind of inside of layer they have it so you can easily distinguish mitochondria and Golgi apparatus and then what is this one this is RER very uh, large structure and then they have a lot of liposome here okay so this is some RER hmm. And also you can see this is a mitochondria like this one, right? So, can you imagine? So first, what is nucleus? This one, right? What is the cell membrane? Maybe this. Okay? What is the... What can you see others? Nucleoside. To produce liposome. Okay? Can you see mitochondria here? Oh, I cannot see. Can you see uh, RER, rough ER? Yes. This is all ER, and then da 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 there. So this is RER. Okay. And then maybe uh, this can be mitochondria or lipid or some vesicle. Yeah, but. If we cannot see clear this kind of inner structure and then two different membrane. Okay, let's see the solution. So you when you when you are expert, you can see nucleoside and nucleus, and then they mention this is uh, mitochondria. Maybe if they have we if we have more high magnification images, we can see it. And then this area there. And then we did, we miss this gorge apparatus here. Maybe around here they have it. Mm. So they may also this is gorge apparatus, but uh, maybe I cannot see in detail. So except this one, they have many other things you can detect, you can see. So if you want to study more, you can visit the website. Okay, this is another example. So this is the outer membrane, right? And this is relatively small. So we can say uh, this is some kind of... Ah. Yeah, so... Yeah, so maybe this is some example of the osteoblast. Yeah, I'll show you in detail. Yeah, in cacao to later, and maybe this is some uh, chondrocyte, as far as remember. So the nucleus and the outermost membrane, and you can see a lot of ER-like structure, right? 
yeah, like structure. And then, in this case, you cannot see nucleoside. How? Sometimes when you cut, when you slide it, nucleoside is another part. So which means that nucleoside is there, but you cannot detect in these images. In this plane, you can detect. But you should know nucleoside is over there. And then, maybe it looks like mitochondria, right? And then, some light of the world vesicles are there. Mm. So this is some heterochromatin, little black dot, and this is a euchromatin, more white. So RER, nucleus, lysosome here, and mitochondria, and liposome, and vesicles, vesicles. Yeah. And then they mention this is some exocytosis, this kind of link, exocytosis. Yeah. But depending on your, also you can see this kind of thing. This is also exo or endocytosis. Maybe this can be endo or exo, we cannot detail, say detail. They can be go up, they can be go uptake. This one. Also you can see this, oh, this, they say endocytosis here, endo. Endo means uptake something. Exo means they secret something. Okay, so when you look at this outer side, you can see these kind of things here, and then yeah, here as well. Yeah. So depending on your mind, you can see some can be exo or some can be endo. Okay, so why we focus on endo and exo? Because when you treat nanoparticle in cell, the cell can uptake nanoparticle. This is my my paper. So I treat this uh, MSN major post nanoparticle in stem cell, and after four hour I collect the cell and then see by TM. So I first check oh this is nucleus I mentioned nucleus, and then uh, where is other things? Maybe. I cannot see very clearly RER. Yeah, but I can see many. It's kind of black dot. Black dot is nanoparticle. So here, 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 here. Okay. So some nanoparticle are already inside. Some nanoparticle they are ongoing uptaking by the this cell. So you can see, even though this single nanoparticle have 105 nanometer, 150 nanometer, but when they uptake, they bulk uptake, so which is called macropinocytosis. Let's look at detail. High magnification images. This kind, of, uh, they are bulkly. They uptake the cell, but they uptake the nanoparticle. So which is called macropinocytosis. Okay, they are already inside. And you can see this looks like uh, RER, something here. And then maybe this can be made mitochondria. So I mentioned like this, macropinocytosis with membrane lofuls. This membrane lofuls. Lofuls means some collecting those nanoparticles from their cell body was only observed without clustering or carbonyl coated membrane or vesicles. I'll show later the example of a clustering or carbonyl. Black arrow show membrane lofers here, typical characteristic of the microfinocytosis, and black asterisk indicate intracellular distribution of the, this nanoparticle in endosomes. So all these things, we can say endosome. Endosome means some space after taking some nanoparticle or other things, endosome. So subcellular type of endosome is vesicle or lysosome. Either can be done. So you must you must know here about some endosomal escape, right? So when they uptake this endosome, 
maybe it is nanoparticle, they can just go through the cytoplasm or they can be fused with lysosome. And then this nanoparticle can be easily break down. So our when you target the nucleus, like the Andrew's hope, uh, this nanoparticle first attacks in this endosome and then after endosome escape in the cytoplasm, they should approach the nucleus. This is how the journey of the gold nanoparticle. Andrew, you got the point, right? Yeah. Your nanoparticle can approach this nucleus after escaping this endosome. Okay? Endosome, they can go out and then they should go near the nucleus. And then they should penetrate the nucleus membrane or they should penetrate through nuclear pore. Okay. This is an example of carbolin or classlin. Actually, it's not easy to see very clearly carbolin and classlin. This is some um, uh, classlin coated pit and carbolin. So carbolin it looks more clear, but classlin like this. Okay. And when you look at the exactly cut the carbolin, they show like this. They always uh, exposed to the outer surface. But sometimes when you cut some another way, they look like here, which means actually they are attached, they are fusing to the cell membrane. But depending on where, where you cut, they show like this. So this is their original manner. And then they can uptake this from this some sort of particle. They can uptake by this carbolin. This is quite different from our micro micro panel synthesis, right? And classically, uh, like more the brush morphology. So let's say uh, this is some classlin link classlin here, okay? Like more dirty or more brushing. And carbolin, li little uh, thin membrane here, you can see it. So this is some um, uh, representative images. Clustering, like this is clustering things, okay? Carbolin, very clear, okay? And then micropinosis, like this kind of uh, membrane lockers, as I showed before, okay? So this is some yeah, mention of the other this description. So you can refer this paper. So this is another example. Yeah. So I treat a uh, strontium M uh, MBN bioblast in human and puppy stem cell, and then observed by BioTM. And I can see many this kind of uh, membrane lockers, which means that they are taken by Macro cytosis, which means they are clustered, they can be uptaken. Okay? So when you make the nanoparticle very evenly, maybe they have many chance to be uptaken by carbolin or crystalline. But when your nanoparticle they are bulky, they are aggregate each other, they are taken by this macropanosis. But most of nanoparticle they are taken by this macropanosis. Okay. And I can check in the endosome, they are located here inside, certain inside there. And you can see it's nucleus, right? And what is that? Looks area, right? You can see many dot 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 here. Uh, so looks area. And then maybe little, little dot can be free ribosome, something like. And then maybe this one. I don't know, mitochondria or physical isotope. You look at this one. Yes, also it is nucleus, right? Cell membrane, live free label jump here. And this is looks ER, right? Yeah, this is also looks ER. Okay. And then I also treat 
silver incorporate BGN. In the same manner, I can detect this micropinocytosis that can be obtained. This is nucleus, heterochromatin, euchromatin structure, uh, nucleus membrane. And clearly, you can see this is can be uh, looks ER, right? ER structure, uh, and rough ER, maybe. like this. And then also you can see the interaction between nanoparticle and bacteria. I culture effectless bacteria and nanoparticle. So I find out nanoparticle, they cannot penetrate the bacteria. They can only attach to membrane, bacterial membrane. And then they will show some reaction. So when you found some bacteria penetrate nanoparticle, this can be also very fancy. So the reason why I choose this uh, bio TM, actually I make this AGBGN, silver ducted BGN, and then I load it tetracycline. So I assume from this silver nanoparticle, duct, uh, loading tetracycline, when nanoparticle can attach to the membrane, maybe they can efficiently deliver some target of drug, tetracycline, to more efficiently to the bacteria. And then they can kill the bacteria more efficiently. That's what I, that's what I want to see. And then I, according to these images, I show them from this uh, direct contact to nanoparticle and cell membrane, I can deliver my drug more efficiently. And then from next study, I confirm my hypothesis from just biochemical assay. So the role of the tetracycline is to inhibit the protein synthesis of bacteria. So I confirm this TCAGBG is better than only TC tetracycline free drug. Even though I, lo I treat the same dose. So you're learning so already and you it, right? Hmm? Yeah, so silver, yeah. So in here, synthetically, silver can destroy the bacteria cell membrane and then uh, maybe tetracycline they also inhibit the protein synthesis of bacteria so from two different mechanisms i can kill the bacteria that's what i what i mentioned in this paper so in material method how you mentioned so tm observe internalization of nanoparticle so normally a uh, four hour is enough to update the update nanoparticle. Okay, so four hours later, uh, and then this kind of amount and this kind of cell, and then cell at fixed twelve hours, very important. Two percent glutaraldehyde and two percent paraformaldehyde, which means four percent PFA, four percent glutaraldehyde, and mix them together one-to-one -one ratio, okay? And then, in PBS, and then they were then post-fixed with osmium tetracyte, two-hour dehydrate and gradual ascending series, ethanol, infiltrated propane oxide, embedded in this embedding kit, and sectioned, and stained with toluidine blue for counterpart staining, and then section again, several nanometer thickness, and double stain with uranium acetate. And then lead citrate. Same section, or Leica they cut again, using special diamond knife, and then transfer to copper and nickel grid. And then section by TM images, voltage of 80 kilovolt. So this highlighted part, you can do by yourself in iTrain. Other part, you can send sample, they will do. Okay? Just you fix the sample and then send your sample to Yonsei University. They can do the other part. And then we also, we also uh, bought this diamond knife for iTrain. So you can, we have some contract to Yonsei University Hospital. 
So, and then this the time lab is quite expensive, around five, $5,000. So we bought maybe four or five years ago. So if we deliver our sample, they use our knife for cutting this one. Because sometimes a nanoparticle can break the knife. So they do not want to do it. So we bought them. And then when you look at the glutaldehyde, actually we have glutaldehyde, small bottle, a big bottle. So when you check the glutaldehyde color, yellow things, which means they're already oxidized, not good for fixed cell. So always use this transparent glutaldehyde. So that's why we bought very small bottle of glutaldehyde in cell room. You can find it. And then how the bacteria nanoparticle just culture the bacterial nanoparticle, uh, eventually it's treated with nanoparticle, and then 30 minutes later, fix and visualize for TM following the aforementioned protocol. Okay, so uh, when you treat the nanoparticle and cell, so you treat them four hours or 30 minutes, and then you collect the cell from centrifuge. How can you do? 30,000 RPM, five minutes, something like that. And then you can see the pellet. And then when you see the pellet, remove the other part, and then tapping, and then using this 2% glutide, 2% paraformaldehyde, fix overnight. And then send the sample. That's all. But you have to see, see the pellet at the centrifuge. You cannot see the pellet by your eye, they cannot cut. Because they can cut this cutting, this cutting, two time cutting. At least they, sh they should see the pellet. Okay? So, which means uh, and you need some certain very huge amount of cell. Not huge, just uh, six well, or two well over six well is enough. And other part will performed by Yonsei University. So, this is a website of uh, Yonsei Hospital Research. So we already have some contract with them. And then in this uh, center, check uh, this uh, Professor Kim's name, my name, and our iTrend, your phone number, and then your, sam your sample types, cell. And then you have to make some PPT to understand them where you look at it. Because there are two options you can visit there without visiting, also they can deliver your images. So if you want to visit there, you can go with, with your PPT. But if you don't have time, just send PPT and take phone to describe what you are looking at, looking for, and then they will visualize. Actually, they are very expert, uh, 10, years, 10 years of experience, so they do better than you. So this is how they did, using some TM blocking, a prefixation using our sample over eight hours, and then they they do PBS washing, post fixation washing, dehydration, uh, embedding preparation and embedding and just overnight other things. So they use this machine and this slide they do by themselves. So and sometimes you can do toroid staining or not. So you can, after consulting with them, they will suggest and just follow them. Yeah. So depending on some cell, organic bacteria, or tissue type, uh, they can visualize. Or from negative counterpart staining, bacteria, phage, exosome, virus, they can visualize. And especially when you look at exosome here, so you also you can get an exosome and you can see the pellet and then send them. They will visualize for you. Okay. Thank you. So any question?